to speak here. It's, uh, it's great to come here for Igor's 60th birthday. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, well, it has finite fields on the title, so, but, the, you know, probably not a lot of dynamics, but you could phrase some of the results that I'm going to prove in terms of dynamics of uh, Lattes maps, so maybe you, as an exercise to the audience to rewrite all my Terms in terms of uh, dynamics of rational functions, but uh, I'm really going to talk about generative elliptic curves. Here's the abstract that I submitted to the to the organizers uh, that we're going to discuss questions about generators for the group of rational points of elliptic curves or finite fields. We're going to connect this with the analog of the function field of Artin's conjecture. We're also going to talk about something that I didn't write there. Talk about this uh, conjecture of Poonen about um, order of points on sub-varieties of a billion varieties of finite fields, which will play a role in something that I'm going to talk about later. Uh, so elliptic curves, I guess we've all seen them. So you have uh, a curve given by a cubic equation. This is an example. It could be a little more complicated, but cubic via stress equations, you get the curve in the plane like this, and you can add points by taking a line through the two points, seeing where the line meets, and then reflecting and getting the sum of the two points. And the beautiful thing about this uh, construction that it's algebraic. So even though, well, it's beautiful geometric construction, but it's also nice, it's given algebraically. So if your points uh, are in the same field as the coefficients, their sum is also in that field. So the, the group of rational points is, the subset of rational points is a subgroup. Uh, and we're interested in the structure of this group when, 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 so if you have an elliptic curve defined over a finite field, we get a finite group, finite abelian group, the group of rational points of the elliptic curve over this finite field, and we're interested in, well, first of all, in its uh, structure, and, and we can show that the, there's at most two generators. This is actually class group, so, you know, you can connect this with parse talk if you want. This thing is falling off. So, and, 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 and it's known that the, the, there are most two generators. So the group is order m times n, and it can always be written like that. Uh, m has to divide this quantity. The, so the, the, well, m has to divide n. It's just the, the, cl the classification of finite abelian groups. So you, you write it as a product of cyclic groups with one order of one dividing the next. In this particular case, it's like this, and, and it, this is, comes from the algebraic geometry that the m has to divide q minus 1. So what typically happens is that it has a big cyclic part and a small extra part. So most of the time, the group is actually cyclic. So you know, if m is 1, then the group is cyclic. And then that's sort of very typical. And we should, I think in the talk, I'm going to be thinking most of the time about the cyclic groups. So you know, the, the questions are more general, but uh, we're really interested in, in, in finding the, the cyclic part. And the question is here. So the question is, how do we find the generators? How do we find the, the two points, one of order m and other, other of order n, so that the, the group that, that realizes this isomorphism? And, and, and um, so the question that I'm really going to concentrate is how to find a point of order n. So if, you have, if I give you an elliptic curve by, by a Weierstrass equation, over a finite field, how do I find a point of order n? And there is no simple formula, unfortunately. There's even problems about finding a point. So even the question of finding a point on an elliptic curve is not completely trivial. It's a, you have a probabilistic alg algorithm that you plug in an x, and there's a 50-50 chance that you find a y. But there's no guarantee. And if you keep tossing a coin, you can get unlucky many times and not find a point. So, that's a, a, a question, but we, we, we would like, and, 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 and there is no simple formula, and in, in some sense, well, when I say there is no simple formula, I have to define what I mean by formula, and of course, you know, there's many interpretations, but if, 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 if in some uh, standard way, 
we'll see that there cannot be a simple formula. So if a reasonable interpretation of this question, it's impossible to have a formula for the generator. But we can, we, we, if we like to formulate a, a, a precise problem, we can ask, is it possible to find generators deterministically in polynomial time? So polynomial in log Q. So it's a computational problem of, given an elliptic curve, find a point of order n efficiently. So if you have a formula, you can just plug in the, 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 the coefficient of the formula and you get the point. But that's not always possible, but you can ask the computational problem, and this is open. So this is an open problem. So what I'm going to do in this talk is look at uh, variants of this problem. So uh, I'm going to, in three different ways, I think, uh, well, uh, let's see how, how far I get in the talk, but I, I want to look at three weakenings of this problem where I can say something non-trivial. So, I'm going to weaken the problem a little bit and be able to, to, to say something. So here's my first result, and it's a joint work with Igor. So I'm, I'm very happy to talk about it here. Uh, in fact, so it was published not, not too long ago, and it was my 100th paper. And I was very happy because it's a, for me it was a big milestone. I got to my 100th paper, and, and <laughs> but then, you know, <laughs> I sent it to Igor, and he said, ah, <laughs> But, but in my defense, I'm younger than him. So <laughs> in theory, I could catch up. <laughs> But so, so here's the theorem. So the theorem says it doesn't tell you where to, to, how to give a generator, but it, it singles out or separates a little subset of the elliptic curve and tells you there is a generator in that little subset. OK? So if you want to search, you don't have to search over the whole elliptic curve. You can search just a, a, at a little subset. And, and here's the, the theorem. So if, if, if your Q, the cardinality of a finite field, is Q0 to the n, where n, Q0 is also prime power. So it's, your finite field is an extension of, of, of another field of not too large a degree. And you write your finite field as FQ0 join alpha. Then you can find, well, the, I'm lying a little bit. That's not for every alpha, but for most alpha it works. You, you can sort of, I, I don't want to state a the precise theorem because it takes a little bit of effort. but. It is essentially this. So if FQ is FQ0 of alpha, you can find an element of order n whose x coordinate is of this form. Alpha plus an element of the subfield. So the, the x coordinate is restricted. So if, if n is, so you're looking at a set of Q0 elements. And, 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 and so instead of looking at all the x coordinates, potentially it would be Q elements, or half Q, because not all x's give you x coordinates. but on this subset here, you find the generator. Uh, of course, these conditions are restrictive, but we, we, we have a, 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 an additional result, which I didn't want to put on us. Uh, ah, yes, yeah, so the constant is explicit. Yes, it's, it's 1 over 2 log 2 or something. So every n bounded by log q0 times some constant. Uh, yes. Is the one over two log two or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The constant is very explicit. It's in the paper. And this is also true if Q zero is let's say five. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so it's if, well, for five Q zero is five. Then n is 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 bounded. Then no, it's not true. So you have to assume that Q zero is sufficiently large. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except for finally many exceptions of Q zeros and. It's gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there is a way of, of, of bootstrapping this theorem to finding a, a, a small set of points where you can find a generator for any extension. So if you have a, an FQ, let's say you have an FP and an FQ, so this may not uh, satisfy the hypothesis of this theorem, but you can go to an extension FP to the R and you go to FQ to the R here, you choose the R carefully, and so that this, this part of the diagram satisfies the condition of the theorem, then you can find, so you have your elliptic curve over FQ, and you, you, so you find a set 
of e over fq to the r, so you, you look at the elliptic curve over here, and over here you can find a uh, situation where you can apply the theorem and have a small set of the, where you can find the generator over here, and then you take a trace down, and, and then you can find generators here. So the theorem can be bootstrapped to a theorem that says, you know, for all elliptic curves, over a large extension of a small finite field. So this is not applies to all elliptic curves, but only elliptic curves that are uh, defined over a large extension of a fi small finite field. You can find a small set for which there is a generator. Uh, so for example, it doesn't apply to elliptic curves over prime fields. Or for elliptic curves over prime fields, you might not want, well, yeah, it applies because, you know, then well, I suppose that you can look at all, all the C's, but then it's, it's not saying anything. But you might want to look at uh, generators whose x coordinate is in a box. And I think under some versions of the generalizer of a hypothesis, there are terms like that. But, uh, you know, I, I... Okay. So here's one sentence about the proof of this theorem. Uh, so we turn this problem into a problem about a curve in an abelian variety. Which abelian variety is that? If you write uh, the coordinates, if you write everything, so you have an extension of fields. FQ, FQ is an extension of FQ0. There's a basis, 1 alpha alpha square up to alpha n minus 1 is a basis of this field extension here. You write everything in terms of the basis. So all the variables are some, you know, are x is x0 plus x1 alpha plus x2 alpha squared and so on. And then you plug everything into the equations of, of your elliptic curve. You get an abelian variety called the veil restriction of scalars the technical construction, but it produces an abelian variety of dimension n out of this elliptic curve, and it's an abelian variety defined over the small field the fq0. And inside this abelian variety, you can make sense of the curve which parameterizes the points whose x coordinate is of this shape. So you get a curve inside the abelian variety, and then you, you, you prove a theorem saying that if you have a, a curve in some abelian variety under reasonable conditions, there is a generator for the group of the points, or a point of large order on the abelian variety land sitting inside this curve. So that's what we prove. So this theorem gives a solution to a weakening of our original problem, which is to find a generator. We don't find a generator, we just say, well, there is a generator in this small set here. Okay? Okay, so let's... Uh, now, I want to... The one thing that uh, I said in my abstract that I was going to talk about, uh, Artin's conjecture. So, Artin's conjecture is that... Is, is this conjecture one here. It's a very old conjecture of Emil Artin. It's probably, a, you know, I don't know, eight years old now. Uh, it's been proved on the GRH, but it's open. That a set of primes p for which 10 or any number that, I mean, there's some numbers that exclude squares or, 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 or negative one and so on, but if you take any number and you want to see for which primes is this number, is this number a primitive root mod p, then you get an, a positive density. So, I mean, the, the problem that I'm looking at is, is, in a way, an analog of the question, how could you find a primitive root mod p given a prime p? Okay, so this is a problem of, you know, you have this group, you want to find a generator. And so, you can try 10. 10 is a good number, right? If 10 is a primitive root, then every, every number mod p is a power of 10. We know how to compute the powers of 10, you just write a bunch of one followed by a bunch of zeros, it's very, very easy to compute powers of 10. You know. The computers may be prefer to, to have 2 as a primitive root and then <laughs> It's going to be the same thing in binary, right? But uh, so it'd be nice to, to when, when, P, when 10 is a primitive root mod P. Well, that doesn't always happen. It happens with this proportion. 37% of the primes have, has, have 10 as a primitive root. So for those primes, we solved our problem. Well, so there's a conjecture, which uh, was uh, conjectured by Lang and Trotter for, for elliptic curves over number fields, and there's a function field analog of that, which I want to state. So you start with an elliptic curve over FQT. Now, T is a variable, so this is a field of rational functions in one variable over FQT. Suppose you have an elliptic curve, which I'm going to denote e, t, e sub T because I want to specialize the value of T. I'm going to plug values for T. So you have an elliptic curve over this field FQ adjoint T, and you have a point. 
So it's a formula. So in, a, in the next slide, or maybe in two slides, uh, I'll actually write down an example of this. So we're gonna see how it's a formula. So this is what you think would be a formula. So you have an elliptic curve depending on a parameter, you have a point depending on the state parameter, and you want to, to well, You'd love if for every value of the parameter, you'd get, so if for every value of the parameter, you'd get PC generates EC. So you specialize the point to that parameter, the value of the parameter, you specialize the curve to the value of the parameter, you'd like to get the generator. I have to make some assumptions that the point is of infinite order, that it doesn't land on, 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 on you know, that the group, the elliptic, yeah, no tutor, no no torsion or something like that. So there are some some assumptions that I have to play, which is hidden here and is under obvious conditions. <laughs> so I, I wrote that just to cover you know cover all my bases and, and you know you can fill it in you know any counterexample that you find you can just put it in there. <laughs> huh? D equals n. What? Oh, D is n. Yes. Thank you, S. This, this N, yeah, so, yeah. So this D is supposed to be N, yeah. And so if you don't get it. it, it it's not true that the, 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 the point is gonna be a generator always. But it's like here, it's like in Artin's conjecture. The, the point is gonna be a generator for a positive proportion of, of, of the C's in FQ to the N. So I mean, you can compute the the, 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 the constant as a constant is like a product of local factors, and but uh, uh, local factors means uh, multiplying over irreducible over places of this field, so irreducible polynomial. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so so what's the argument? The argument here is the same as the argument here. So you look at what's the condition for the thing to be. So this, the, each of these factors here is saying, what's the probability that the, the index is two, or the index is divisible by two, that, the, the, that 10 is a square mod p, okay? So the probability that 10 is a square mod p is a half, so the probability that 10 is not a square mod p is one minus a half, is, 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 is the term corresponding to p equals two. Well, actually, this p is not the same p, right? So this should be an L, okay? But, uh, so what's the probability that 10 is a cube? But it, it, that's only relevant if p is one mod three, right? So the probability that, that p is one mod three and, 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 and n is a cube mod p is one sixth. And those are we want to exclude. So that's, the, that's what corresponds to that. And then you do, you do that and because this product converges, then you say, well, the pro so this is the probability that the, 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 the index of 10 is not divisible, the, the index of the group generated by 10 is not divisible by two, not divisible by three, not divisible by five, and so on. A and it should work the same way for, for this. Do you, do you have an expression for the proportion in terms of conjecture two? Yeah, it's a product of densities, yes. So it's a it's, it's sort of, in, in the, uh, so you, for, for each, is a product of density over the places of FQT. It's an infinite product. The generic, uh, the generic factor is uh, No, it depends on the, on, on the, 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 the elliptic curve. Or maybe, yeah, maybe there's, there's a term that is sort of generic, yeah, it's sort of, what is it, is the, you have to put in the, the so this, this is the order of the, the torsion, so you have to put in the order of the n torsion, and then it's automorphism group of, so it kind of the GL2 of finite field times something else, yeah. Because usually on the function fields, mm -hmm. these, uh, these proportions that uh, for the long trotters uh, are kind of complicated, uh, uh, for function fields, they, they tend to become easier, right? Uh, no, but it's still you get an infinite product, it doesn't simplify, I don't think. I have to look, but, yeah. So this is still a conjecture. So this, 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 this so some things are easier. In the, so the, the analog of, uh, so if you look at the Artin's primitive root conjecture and, and formulate the analog for the multiplicative group, then it's known in the function field case because this thing is known in the number field case 
under GRH, and in the functional field case you have GRH. But here, this thing is not known, and the problem is that the infinite product has, the, 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 the term here is a, has a cubic thing instead of a quadratic thing. So, so the, the degrees of the fields that you have to deal with are growing, and, and so there's, there's some technical issues that prevent you having an, a, a, a proof of this. So this is still a conjecture, but there's been some progress, and, and the idea, which, which is a, an idea that came out of the work of Gupta and Marty, that, that so they have a result that if you have three primes, at least one of them is a primitive, primitive root mod P for infinitely many P's. So you might have heard of this, this theorem. So out of two, three, and five, one of them is a primitive root mod P for infinitely many P's. You don't know which ones. Is either two, which one it is, either two, three, or five? Probably all, no, certainly all, of three, all three of them. But uh, Gup, Gupta and Marty uh, don't specify that for you. And, uh, and the idea is to look, instead of, uh, 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 so you have this point P sub T, or, or, or the number 10, and what really you want to, looking at is the group generated by this guy, or the group generated by this guy. Because you want to know if the thing is a generator, so you're looking at the, the, the cyclic subgroup generated by this thing and seeing if it's, it's the whole group where it lives. And, and, and what you can do is, is consider subgroups of this thing, but perhaps of, of larger rank. And then look at the image. Oh, again, it's the N is D, so sorry. <laughs> so you look at the image of gamma into the, when you specialize, when you make T equals C. So n is equal to g. Uh, and when, when your subgroup is of rank at least six, so instead of just finding one generator, you're finding six elements that the whole group generated by them, it, 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 subgroup generated by them is the whole thing, then you get a positive proportion. So you can prove the analog of the Artin's conjecture for large rank groups. So, in a way, you, find, you solve the problem of finding a generator by a formula, except it doesn't work all the time. It works maybe 60% of the time, 70% of the time. Let me give an example which comes out to be a, a very curious fact. Uh, so here's an example of, of what I mean by a formula. So let's start with the elliptic curve over F2 adjoint T given by this Weierstrass equation, y squared plus xy equals x cubed plus t cubed. I'm working in characteristic two, so this point here, t comma zero, is the point there. Uh, it turns out that this point is a generator of this group, so this group is uh, infinite cyclic, generated by p sub t. So you can try and specialize, you can look at the a's for which a comma zero generates this group. And, and so the, the, the theorem applies for a positive proportion of A's, well, no, not the theorem applies, but the conjecture for a positive proportion of, of, of A's, you're gonna get that this guy is a generator. Uh, and, but we, we, I started looking at this at, at a specific situation where, when the order of the group is of this particular sh uh, shape. So, and because they're in characteristic two, it means that the group is cyclic of all the two to the n. So in this, and this I noticed that all the time, this guy was a generator. So th that's kind of surprising. This is not for all, all A's, it's just for the A's that satisfy this thing. Then P A is always a generator. And, and it's because of this term. There's, there's a sort of funny, in, uh, uh, um, interaction which is very uncommon between the condition of being divisible by two and the group, the order of the group being divisible by three. So in this particular case there's this interaction and, and then turns out that you get this corollary that uh, this guy is always a generator of this group if the order of the group is two to the n. Now, the reason I was looking at that is because uh, there is a relationship between the, the, the elliptic curves that have uh, two to the over f two to the n that have two to the n points and, and so so 
so-called cluster of some zeros, which turn out to be important for some cryptographical construction. So there's a paper of Ahmadi and Granger that, that explores this, and, and so there's a, an interesting open question, in fact, is how do you determine the A's for which this happens? And by, 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 by knowing this, it, uh, it, it gives me some idea of how, how to try and find those A's, but uh, I don't know. But uh, so, so uh, Mirella Siperiani and Alina Kojokaro and myself are trying to work out what, what it is that's behind this. So there's a, some question about, uh, so the, we had that infinite product, and, and, and to get that infinite product, you have to prove that the condition that the index is divisible by, by some prime L is, and, and the condition that the index is divisible some other prime L prime are independent conditions. So that's why you get an infinite product. And, and, and this, this situation here is, is exactly a situation where the two conditions are not independent. So the conjecture is that they, they are independent up except for finally many L's, which is reasonable. Uh, but there's still a possibility that for finally many else there is some dependency, and we want to figure out exactly what the, the dependencies are. And this, and, and you, you could, you know, one could imagine that there there were no independencies, but it turns out that there is in this particular case there is a dependency between divisibility by two and divisibility by three that leads to this very weird result that this guy is always a generator if you have all the two to the n. And notice that all the two to the n is sort of the worst case scenario for picking up an element at random and seeing if it's a generator, because half of them are generators, half of them are not. Usually, there are lots of generators, right? But uh, for example, if the group has prime order, anything is a generator. So if the group is prime order, you don't have to worry about anything. But uh, okay. All right, so the first approach was, was to find a small subset for which the, there is a generator inside. The second approach was to find a formula that gives you a generator once in a while. So not always true, but you know, 30% of the time, 50% of the time, that formula is going to give you a generator. The third approach is, okay, let's not try and find a generator, let's try and find a point of large order. Well, large is whatever you, you can manage. But, uh, so there's this conjecture of Poonen that uh, if you have an elliptic curve and a function, a non-constant function on the elliptic curve, so for example, like a, 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 in the, talk, the two talks this morning, there was a, a curve and a function on the curve, and they were looking at uh, uh, some properties of this function, but here I'm looking at some other properties. It's a similar situation. But you, you want to look at the points on the curve, maybe exclude things that are in smaller subfields, so take points on the curve that, whose coordinates generate f to u to the n, and the conjecture predicts is either the point has large order in this group, or fp, the value of the function, has large order in the multiplicative group of the ground field. So that's the conjecture. It's a very strange conjecture. I, maybe I can explain to you, if you're interested later, why, why such a conjecture. But uh, there is this conjecture that either the point has large order or the value of the function on the point has large order here. So one way to, to produce, and uh, so Poonen's conjecture is large in this sense, and I, I've proved some weak results in this direction, so I can get something out of this idea. Not as, as good as, as this, but something. I don't want to be specific, but uh, the, the, the upshot is that you can get a point of large order by forcing the value of the function at p to be of small order. So if you force f of p to have small order in the multiplicative group, then you get p of large order. So I'm going to give you an example of how, how this works. So here's an example. So let's start with this elliptic curve y squared plus xy equals xq plus 1 over f2. I want to look at it over extensions of f2. So I want to look at, uh, well, and I want to, so I want to look at, well, I'm going to look at p primes, two, so that 2 is not a square mod p. I'm going to take a primitive pth root of unity. And, and uh, well, I want to make this, this, this zeta to be the x-coordinate of a point. 
And so there's this cute formula, which I, I discovered, and it's related to some work of Doug Omer, which is a little surprising, but it's sort of uh, incidental to what I'm talking about. But you, you can solve, you can so you can s find the point whose x coordinate is zeta, explicitly. So this is a sort of interesting formula. So, but the point here for us is important, is just that you can put x equals zeta. I mean, the, 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 the explicit expression for the y is, is, is less relevant. I mean, it's, it's important to know that there is a point that you can solve for y in the same field as zeta lives. And, but how it looks like it doesn't matter. But now I want to put this condition here, that 2 is a primitive root mod p. So what's the effect of this condition? The effect of this condition is that that the, the, the degree of the field extension becomes p minus 1. So if I take a primitive p root of unity, where is a primitive p root of unity, where p is a prime for which 2 is a primitive root, so all, the order of 2 mod p is p minus 1, then the degree of this extension is that. Which means, if you think about it, is that zeta has small order. So zeta is an element in, zeta belongs to f2 to the power p minus 1. So it's a huge field and has order p in f2 p minus 1 star. That's an example of the smallest possible order in terms of the field, size of the field for an element not in a subfield. So I'm forcing the x coordinate of this point. So my function from the, so the, the previous uh, uh, thing had a function f. The function f that I'm taking for this example is, 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 is x, the x coordinate. is a function on the curve, right? x is a function on the curve. So I'm making x of p having small order. Zeta here, under those conditions, has small multiplicative order. So Poonen predicts that P has large order. OK? Now, there is a slight uh, twist, uh, wrinkle here, is that P is in a, uh, 2P is, in a, is an element in this quadratic subfield. So there's a subfield of, so F2 to the P minus 1, this field here, is a quadratic extension of that field, and 2p actually lands in this su smaller subfield. So there's, you cannot have the, the point p being a generator of a, a very large order on EF2 to the p, because 2p lands in the subfield. But what happens is that 2p has very large order in this field, which is what, what well, that's what Poonen predicts. I can prove some, something weak in that direction, not quite up to Poonen's prediction, but I, I can prove that 2p has large order. So, so this is a very explicit ex expression of an element of large order on this elliptic curve over this field. These fields are special, so I'm not, this is not working for every field. You're only working for fields of this particular shape. But it's a nice expression of a point of large order. Again, not always, right? So we have to, we're giving something up. We, we're giving up working all the time. It just works for this particular examples, and it only works, uh, it, it only gives you a large order rather than a generator. I'm not claiming that these things are going to be generators. They're not always generators. Thank you. <laughs>